Welcome to another Advent of Code walkthrough. Today we'll be looking at 2022 Day 5. So this one is called Supply Stacks. The expedition can depart as soon as the final supplies have been unloaded from the ships, and they're stored in stacks of marked crates, but because the needed supplies are buried under many other crates, they need to be rearranged. So they have a giant cargo crane that can move crates between stacks, and to make sure none of the crates uh, get crushed or fall over, they will rearrange them in some carefully planned steps. And after, each after all the rearrangements, the desired crates will be at the top of each stack. They don't want to interrupt the crane operator during this procedure, but they forgot to ask which crate wound up where, and want to be ready to unload them as soon as possible. They have a drawing of the starting and uh, st stacks of the crates and the rearrangement procedure, which is the input. So this format is not very nice to handle. So in this example, we have three stacks of crates. Stack one has Z on the bottom and N at the top. Stack two has M, C, D in that order, top, bottom to top. And stack three has one crate P. And then it gives the rearrangements. So the first rearrangement moves one from stack two to one, so it picks up the D and moves it here, which is what we see here. Then we move three from one to three. And since it's a stack, we can only take stuff off the top and put stuff on the top. So this D gets moved first, then the N, then the Z. So you'll see that the D is now at the bottom of these three, followed by the N, and then the Z is left on top. Then two crates are moved from two to one, but since it's a stack, they get reversed in order. And finally, one stack is moved from one to two, which moves the M back onto stack two. And so this gives us the desired output CMZ. So after this rearrangement, what crate ends up on top? So just processing the input honestly took me more time than actually solving the problem. But one important thing to note about the input is that there are only nine stacks. Most significantly, there isn't a tenth, so the width of each one is exactly the same. It is three characters with a fourth um, s f as a space in between. So what that means is, uh, so we'll want to keep track of all of the stacks. So let's say stacks are s equals empty list. So um, of course we want our stacks to be vertically represented, but we can't really read our input like that. So we'll do it line by line first, and then we'll post-process all of the data. So what does that mean? Well, we're gonna read each line. So for line in open zero, um, or actually, since we're going to be reading two separate blocks, the drawing and then the uh, movement configuration, let's say x equals open zero, as that allows us to loop through it two separate times. So for x in, sorry, for line in x, if a line is just an empty new line, then we break out of the loop. So that would happen here. It is important to note that when looping through open zero, the trailing new line is left in. So this will be, the blank line will actually be a backslash n. It's actually this one. So now for each line, where are the characters that we're representing? Well, they are at index one, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 13, etc. One larger than multiples of four. So what we can do is um, our stacks, uh, let's just print this for now, print, and then our, we'll run a loop for k in range length of line divided by four, because the length of the line will be a multiple of four, um, because uh, four, four, and then at the end there's a new line, so that accounts for the missing space. So we loop k from in this case, zero up to eight. In the test case, just zero up to two. And each time we get the character at index k times four plus one. So that gives us index one, five, nine, 13, etc. So let's just run this first, uh, run it on the test, and we get that. So you'll see that this gives us our stacks. It also gives us the last row, but that's fine for now. So now let's append that to the stacks. Uh, so now we get this, and I'll print stacks at the end. We get our stacks represented row by row. Now we want to drop the last row. We can do s.pop, uh, because that's the number row and we don't need that. And finally, we want to translate it to be vertical. So Python has a built-in function called zip. It essentially takes multiple iterable arguments, and then outputs tuples going pairwise. Oh, sorry, not pairwise, but like uh, horizontally. 
So let's open up a Python 3 REPL and I'll show you what this means. So let's say A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and B is equal to 5, 6, 7, 8. Then if we call zip on A and B, we'll get a zip object. But if we list it out, we get this. So the first element is the first element of each argument, so the 1 and the 5. The second argument is the second of each list, 2 and 6, etc. And we can do this with a third list too, so let's add C and let's make it all zeros. Then list zip A, C, B, we'll put a zero between all of these, so we'll get 105, 206, 307, and 408. So basically what we want to do is zip of stacks 0, stacks 1, uh, sorry, S0, S1, S2, etc. And this will give us the appropriate output because we will be feeding it row by row and it will tell us what's the first element of each row, in other words, the first column. What's the second element of each row, in other words, the second column. And so if you want to pass every item in a list as function parameters separately, that's what the splat operator is for, star s. This just says, take s, unpack it, and dump all of the values in it as separate function arguments. So now we just, uh, so one important thing to note is that zip outputs a list of tuples. Tuples cannot be modified, but we need to modify these later. Um, so uh, you can do map list on this. However, we're actually going to have to process it a different way as well. If we just print this out first, then you'll notice that we have extra spaces. So we need to get rid of those. And the easiest way to get rid of those is to take our tuple, join it together into one string, and then strip the white space using the built-in function. To do that, we'll do a list comprehension. So uh, for each for each column in our uh, translated or zipped version, we'll take C, we'll join it on the empty string to convert it into a string. So that's what we get now. And then we'll call dot strip on it. And that's what we have. Now, this is actually sort of inverted because recall that in our original test input, D is at the top, right now D is at the front. And although most stacks do uh, dictate that the front is the same as the top, in Python, arrays operate from the end. So dot append and dot pop are all fast operations that happen at the end. You can modify the front, but it's slow. In a problem of this size, this doesn't really matter, but for good practice, you should get into the habit of having them at the end because it's also easier that way. So we'll take this, we'll reverse it using the built-in construction for reversing strings and lists. That's what we get now. And finally, we want to turn each of these strings back into a list, which you can do by calling the built-in list function on it. And so that's what we have now. So that's our list of stacks. So we can just reassign s to equal that because we didn't want our stacks to be row-wise in the first place. Now we need to go through each of the steps here. So we can just keep looping through x now. So let's just print those out. This is what we have. So I found that the easiest way to extract the numbers is actually using regular expressions. You could use string processing with like splitting on the move and then from and then to or whatever, but the easiest way is to just import the regex module and then do re.find all a sequence of multiple digits within line. And if we print that, you'll see that for each line, it gives us just the digits. And so we'll want to map int over that we get the numbers themselves. And of course, they're always going to be three per line, so we can say A, B, C equals this, where A is the number to move, B is the source, and C is the destination. So now, because we're moving one by one, what you can do is uh, we're moving away from B and onto C. So C dot extend, or sorry, I don't know if that's even a function. Okay, it is. So we can do C dot extend, which will modify C with a new list, B, and then we want to get the last A elements. 
So in Python, you can index arrays negatively. Negative one refers to the last element. So negative a refers to the eighth last element. So negative a forward, that gives us the last a elements. And then we want to reverse these because remember, we're working with a stack. So if we pick up n items one by one and then put them back down, they'll be in the opposite order. And then b equals b up to, or sorry, um, this is actually supposed to be stacks at C. C is just a number, but the stack at position uh, C and B. And then finally, the stack at position B, we just remove the last A elements. In other words, we keep the first A L, uh, the first uh, length minus A elements, like so. So to recap what that does, basically we take the source stack, pick up the last A elements, reverse them, and then extend, uh, add them onto the end of the destination stack. And then we take the source stack and change it so that we keep all but the last A elements. And now if we print out S, we see that we have, we see that we have our, ooh, yeah, right, because uh, the, Input addresses the stacks in one indexing, but Python uh, lists start at zero, so we'll do C minus one, B minus one, uh, B minus, yeah, this will work. Okay, and we now see that we have our stacks. And so recall that the intended output was CMZ, because the top of the stack is at the end, what we're going to do is um, A negative one for A and S. Recall that you can address arrays negatively, so negative one is the last element. And now we just need to join this into one string. And so if we run this on our final input, we get CWM TGH BDW, which is the correct output for part one. Part two, you notice the process isn't following a prediction. It's a crate mover 9001 instead of a 9000. It can pick up and move multiple crates at once. And so instead of um, reversing, they stay in the same order. This is actually an extremely trivial modification. Just remove the part that reverses it each time, and you are literally done. SSCGWJ CRB, that is the correct output. So that was probably one of my fastest part twos. Uh, the way I did it in contest was actually a bit different. Instead of picking up all the elements and then reversing them, I just popped and pushed one by one, which is admittedly a bit dumb. But the modification to part two was still very fast because only a small amount of the logic I had to change. I spent like probably close to two minutes just trying to figure out how to get the input uh, read in correctly. So that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Thank you for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for day six.